Let's take a trip on the USS Iowa, shall we? All right. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> but uh, okay. So when you're done, you just have to zap that little X up there, and then cool. All right. So here we are. Um, so real quick, what uh, what's your role here at Autodesk? I'm a user experience designer. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. So you're getting a good taste of the user experience here. Yeah. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I am going to load the USS IO on the table. And um, depending, I think you have a pretty good machine there that you're working with. Uh, it's a really, really big model. Like, it's very heavy. So okay. if you don't have a good machine, you're going to feel... You're going to feel it a little bit. Oh, so, okay. so tell me if when I load it, if it gets like stuttery for you, because okay. we'll, ha we'll have to unload it. So, okay. All right. So uh, let's see, USS Iowa, and then go that, and then that. It, it'll take a second to load. Okay. If, we, if you get stuck in an eternal loading black screen, it means that the model hasn't is the right place in your folders. Do you see okay, it? Okay, I do, yeah. Okay, good. And then how's performance? Uh, it's a little jittery, but... Is it... Um, uh, like, are you going to get sick? No. Okay, sweet. So I'm going to scale it up here. And then if you want to... Are you familiar with teleporting? Okay. okay. Awesome. Yeah, and so... Like, you can walk around, you know, in your local space here. Uh, just, what, I don't know how much space you have to walk around, but you can physically walk around in that space. But when you have to move, like, big distances, that's when you're going to want to teleport. Okay. For, for example, if you're um, okay with heights, I can, I can spawn us, like, right up there on the top of, on this radar thingy. Yeah. And then... And then we can, you can get this beautiful bird's eye view of the ship. Uh, but keep in mind that um, your brain is going to think that you're actually up there. And okay. it's going to be like, Diane, <laughs> get out of here. What are you doing? We're going to die. <laughs> okay. And, and so um, it's kind of a shock. <clears throat> so you just have to be ready for that kind of that feeling. Okay. Okay. Um, this, these are the turrets. These, these, there's three of them. They're, 16 inch guns each one of them right so they they shoot bullets that are 16 inches in diameter it fought in world war ii it fought in north korea the korean war it fought in vietnam and even fought in the um the first uh gulf war and um now you know battleships they don't make battleships anymore simply because in world war ii it was discovered that they no nothing could compete with the airplane Right. So now oh. it's all about aircraft carriers and how do we protect the aircraft carriers so that okay. they can launch their 300 airplanes. And, and they're much more effective than our battleships. Um, but anyway, OK, uh, it so so it's a museum and it's actually sitting in Long Beach Harbor uh, by not next to the Queen Mary, but in that vicinity. And um, it's a museum and it's privately owned. Except that the government can come in any time and say, hey, this is our ship again. Thanks. Ah. <laughs> uh, and, and since that's part of the deal, they have to keep it operable to a certain extent. Like they're, oh, not allowed okay. to, they're not allowed to have ammunition. They're not allowed to fire the guns. But they have to keep certain parts of this moving so that if the government comes in and says we want our ship back, uh, they can drive it away. Part B is that uh, this is a museum, so people come and they can tour and walk around the deck. But all they get to do is walk around the deck, you know, and maybe up some of these places. They can't go in the turret, which is, I can tell you, where all the interesting stuff, well, not all, a lot of interesting stuff lives in that turret. Um, okay. And the reason, they, the reason they can't go in there is because there's hydraulic fluid all over the place, and um, that hydraulic fluid has PCBs, which are cancer-causing agents, agents, basically. So, okay. um, yeah, and, and how that hydraulic fluid got all over the place was that, you know, the, the guns are moving all the time, and they take a lot of hydraulic fluid, and that hydraulic fluid gets on the floor, but people are walking up ladders, right? And so you're walking up the ladders, and it's all over your hands now. And so yeah. when, 
right? And, and then your hands are touching things and it's all over everything. So when we went in there, we had to wear full hazmat suits with special gloves. The gloves had to be duct taped to the hazmat suit and, and oh, special wow. boots. Yeah, it was like, it was <laughs> crazy. So, um, so yeah, so obviously people can't go in there. So the, the two main use cases are, how can we get people to be able to visit the turrets? And how can we make it a lot safer for the people that work on the ship? And, wow. um, and, and these turrets, by the way, in, well, I'll show you the inside. They are, um, they're meant for like 18 to 20 year old guys who like the jungle gym because there are no gates <laughs> to prevent oh. you from falling down 25 feet on <laughs> solid steel, you know, and wow. with this hydraulic fluid all over the place, you know, there are places where you stand there and it's like, whoa, I'm oozing to the left a little bit. You know <laughs> what I mean? So, so it's, it's really dangerous. If we can prevent them from going in some number of times, like they're still going to go have to go in there. But if we can do a scan and maybe they just need to pull a measurement of something, yeah. you know, they can get into VR or in a real time thing and go, okay, measure from here to here. Oh yeah, that's that. Good. We don't have okay, to go in yeah. there, right? So it's a lot faster and it's a lot safer. That's cool. Um, yeah. Huh. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take this little tool and I'm going to, uh, what? Oh, hold on. Let me move down the ship really fast because I the ceiling's not tall enough in here. Okay. And I'm, I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to put us right up here, and then um, uh, when I press the magic button, you and I are going to be transported at full scale on top of this thing. Okay. All right. Cool. Sweet. So here we go. We go one for me, one for you, one for the camera. All right. So are you ready? Yep. Okay. We're going to be really high in the air. I'm excited. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we're uh, we're up on the top of the ship. Yes. Wow. And Diane, let me show you <laughs> the ship, right? Wow. Yeah. So so, I mean, you can see the 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 beauty of this is um, just the jumping between contexts with no effort, you know. So so basically, um, in our building world here. Uh, and you can teleport around on top of this thing too. Uh, in our in our building world, though, what this would be is that holodeck that we we're the the inside the room we were just at. Like we would plan out the session, what we're going to do, where we're going to go. We're going to go here and here and here and here, right? And then we have tools too. So I, <clears throat> I have like 200 hours in this thing, so I'm I'm very proficient with the tools. Um, it, it probably wouldn't be a good use of your time to like fumble around and try to figure out <laughs> the tools right now but certainly play with it uh but we i have um we have these pencils right and i could be like hey uh first we're gonna go here so you see i drew a circle and yeah. then we're going to you know make that the first thing and then oh, okay. awesome and then i grab that and say here you go diane oh you can, wow you can reach out and just pull the trigger bring your other hand over and grab it and then pull Right. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's teleport down there. Uh, and what we're trying to do is get to the American flag. I'm going to teleport to this circular thing down here first. And uh, boop, I'll let go and say, hi, do you see me down here? I do. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, in addition to the drawing tools, um, we also have uh, the measurement tools. So come over here and check this out. So I, I told you this was a 16 inch gun and now I'm going to put my money where my mouth is and say, uh, Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's like, you know, it's like, you know how a two by four isn't really two <laughs> by four. It's like one and three quarters by three and three quarters. I, this, this might be that, but anyway, so we can pull measurements and do whatever we want. If there was data attached to this thing, we could potentially pull data out of it and, and see what it is, like, really. We also have a full web browser that we can pull up YouTube and watch videos about this thing while we're here. Oh, okay. Uh, which is, yeah, which is pretty amazing. Um, and then, let's get rid of that. Uh, but then let me show you the bullet that comes out of this gun. Like I, like I said, 2,500 pounds, right? So it's 
It's uh, not light and uh, it's not in that folder. And it is right here. Okay, so here you go. Just to give you oh. this, a sense of scale. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah, again, this is 2,500 pounds. It's like six feet tall. This can be a whole bunch of different types of um, ammo. So it, it can actually be a nuke, or it can be a cluster bomb, or it could be, there's all different kinds of stuff it can be, but uh, we, we have control over the model that way. So I'm going to, hey, there it is. Check it out. And then you can reach <laughs> out and you can grab that if you want. Yep. Careful. It's nuclear. And don't want that going <laughs> off. <laughs> uh, right. So, and then you can also take, and um, I could do this a little better. This is kind of a last minute um, addition, but you can take the bullet and say, all right, is it this bullet fits inside of this barrel? So pretty cool. And you know what else is really cool? Um, I'm I'm kind of like a war nerd. I'm not going to I don't think war is glorious or anything like that, but um I think it's really interesting. Uh, think about the scale of war. It's unimaginable. Like like real yeah. like you don't you don't want something like this looking at you as no. <laughs> a target, right? Because here's yeah. here's here's what they here's what they do. Here's how it works. And you're going you're going to know more about this than you ever wanted to, I'm sure. So <laughs> So, so we have three guns here, right? And so what they do is they line them up like this, like this, and like that. And oh. then, yeah. And then they, they, when they fire, it goes, choo, you know, choo, 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 up. And that one goes a little bit straighter. And that one goes a little bit straighter, right? And the uh -huh. way they do is it's, it's timed so that they're all going to land at the same time from different angles, which creates a much larger kill zone um, oh. yeah and so you have these 2500 pound projectiles flying it at some ungodly speed at different angles at two football fields in radius you know wow. you're dead <laughs> and 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 p.s there's nine of these and it happens every 45 seconds oh my god <laughs> okay so <laughs> so um yeah and the crazy thing is there is stuff out there that will kill this thing. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so that will move us into part two, which is some of the, um, the, the upgrades that this thing that it's gone through, okay. uh, like the modernization. And, uh, so one of those things, um, is a, a uh, missile defense system because the missiles are the things that are going to hit this uh, and, yeah. and, and wipe it out. And so uh, there's this, there's this machine gun here called the phalanx. And what this is, is totally computer controlled. It fires like a Brazilian rounds a second. And when it locks on a missile coming in towards the ship, it just starts go. It just, you can't even, it's not like that. It's like, you know, is it's firing so many rounds and it's tracking via that system right there. It's just tracking the missile all the way and hopefully it gets shot down. Um, yeah. They also, they also have chaff. If you're familiar with chaff, it's like a bunch of uh, uh, aluminum foil they shoot up in the air to confuse the missile into like, oh. what do I hit? Is it there? Is it here? What is it? Okay. And, and so they have that and this and another thing, which I forget, um, what it is, but uh, it's a three-part defense system. Um, so here, if you would like, you can have that. Take that home with you. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, today only. <laughs> uh, so it came on the um, right day. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yes, it's, it's Bogo. It's Bogo day. Um, and what they are trying to stop is one of these. So this oh. is a harpoon missile. And it's a, I don't know if this missile is supersonic or not, but I, it might be. And anyway, the way these work is that they fly really low over the water. So let's, let's illustrate this like this. So here's the world, right? And uh, here's the ship. And here's this missile coming this way. Whoops. Okay. But the ship can only see. Ah. Uh. 
right yeah. line of sight that way. And so it stays low because if it's coming in here, it's going to see it all day, but it stays here. And that way, when the ship does see it, it only has, you know, a very precious little time to react to the mm -hmm. thing. The harpoon missiles are shot out of the harpoon uh, missile launchers here. So there's a, <laughs> <laughs> there's a couple of these. So, yeah, so I guess I'll delete those. And now I want to show you the, the turret. Uh, maybe I can pause and see if you have any questions. Ah. Uh. Where do you begin? I know. Yeah, it's, really, <laughs> it's a lot. I'll adjust to this because <laughs> your brain is just this raw piece of meat and it's your consciousness <laughs> that's really driving, you know, keeping your brain from like just reacting instinctively to danger and everything that's happening in here. But but your brain fully buys it. Like your brain is uh -huh. like, yeah, we're, we're here right now, you know. So, um, <laughs> so let me show you uh, this turret. No, oh, it worked. Sweet. Okay, so remember how I was telling you this is uh, six stories tall? Yeah. <laughs> so here, uh, come over here where I am. Or actually, come over here where this is. So like I was saying before, um, hey, here, here's how this thing works, is that the this is the very abbreviated version of how it works. So uh, the ammo starts way down there, and don't worry, I'll show you the full scale of this thing in a second. It comes up through this tube right here. Um, there's it comes up to about here, and there's a little thing you slide which prevents it from falling back down. So it sits there, and then this whole table unfolds, right? Ah. And and a ram comes out of the wall right there, and it pushes because it's 2,500 pounds, it pushes the projectile into the barrel. And okay. then there's actually a, um, a door. Can you see the laser when I point? Yeah. Okay, sweet. There's a door right here. And uh, through on the other side of that wall is where the powder comes up. And, for, and when I talk about powder, remember the size of the bullet? So the powder is probably... I mean, it's, it's longer than the bullet, but uh, anyway, there's four rolls, and those rolls are 16 inches too. So the roll is like 16 inches by some length, probably 12 or uh, something. Anyway, there's four of those, and they get rolled onto this thing, and the ram pushes that in. They slam that, shut that door, and then do the aiming and whatever, they fire. Um, but... When I was telling you that they jump around this thing, uh, so here's just to this level. And so I was in here and I was up there and right like out here in space, you know, on this level, but out in space is this little platform where the guy who opens and closes that door stands. And that is, um, there's no railings or anything and that hydraulic fluid and so what you're looking at is this drop, you know, to here, which we look at it here, maybe it's no big deal. But when you're in there, like yeah. my head is my head is six feet above the ground and that platform is, uh, you know, 12, uh, 13 feet above here and maybe 16 or 20 to there. And, and so my head is plus six feet yeah. you know, from that. So so it's like um, it's dangerous jumping around in these things. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So here is the full scale of this thing and why 57 people can work in here. Is because oh, there's wow. Because all these levels, all these levels. Wow. And then another really interesting thing that I, I learned um, just recently, actually, is that, you know, that, that ship that you saw is the largest battleship ever built by the United States. It's not the largest battleship ever. That belongs to the Germans or the Japanese, I forget. It's either the Bismarck or the Yamamoto. One of those two is definitely bigger than this, but this is the biggest one that the United States ever made. And um, uh, there's a good reason that I told you that. The whole ship is designed around the caliber of the gun. So that's a 16 inch oh, barrel, okay. a 16 inch bullet, 
that's where they start. And then the whole thing is designed from that decision, right? So I thought that wow. was really, I thought that was really interesting. The ship, right? So we have the, this, which is like a 50 caliber. I mean, if you, if you come over here, you can just see like, uh, the size of that barrel and the oh. size, the size of the bullet coming out of the barrel. It's not as big as that 16 inch gun, but compared to like a little 22 round, you know, that thing is over a foot long and several inches in diameter. Like it's, it's, a, it's just insane. Diane, it's insane. The whole thing's insane. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and if that's not um, enough for you, then we have the, uh, the five inch guns. And so these guns shoot, five inch um five inch in diameter projectiles um and uh there are on the ship in world war ii there were like 20 something of these 40 something of those Wait, i was telling on. merton i, I okay. think my i think my grandfather was on a battleship in really? world war ii i think Ooh. but i'm not sure which one missouri uh i'm not i'll have to ask my dad yeah. Uh, so ch but check it out, Diane. We can go, oh, this is during the daytime. What does it look like at uh, in the morning, right? Oh, or at, or nice. at dusk, yeah. Or what about at night? Oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and, of course, I'm just showing you models. In terms of functionality, like, we can do a lot of stuff. We can change materials on anything. Um Oh, the camera tool is cool. So if you, let's see, the little, remember that little button on your left hand? There's, click that one on your right hand, and that'll bring up another menu. And then see, yeah, see that camera right there? Just click that camera. Cool. And then if you point it at me, <laughs> <laughs> and click the, yeah, click the trigger, you'll take a picture. If you, if you press up one time on the, the, the big thumb pad, you should see like a selfie cam. Oh yeah. yeah. There I am. That's totally me. So, <laughs> so you'll notice if you turn your thumb down, you'll frown. Aww. And then turn it up and you're smiling. <laughs> and That's then you awesome. can Yeah, and then you can take your selfie or whatever you want to do. Um, <laughs> and another really like amazing thing about this is that uh, you know you're in California right now yeah. and I'm in Colorado and, and not just that, but we're not just like talking on the phone. I'm like waving my arms and talking and <laughs> excitedly telling you about this. Like you, you see my body language. You understand that I am excited about this yeah. via my body language. Right. So, so it, it's just it cuts out the, the, the fat of the communication process when we can just be standing here, you see my language, and I'm like, no, that is not how it works, right? Like, you get it. You get it immediately. So, um, and then we can we can resolve whatever issue. Um... I guess he can't hear you. What? You can't hear me? Mer Merton's trying to ask a question. And five, four, three, two, one, go. Okay. So. Let's just uh, shrink it down. So I have all these. I don't know if you can see this panel and all the icons on it, but I can scale this down. Oh, whoops, sorry. I'll bring this over to you. So I can I can scale this thing down to a, a specified scale. So if I click on that one, I have one to two, one to five, one to ten. We'll make mm -hmm. this one to ten. Oh, oh no, looks like we're inside of it now. I can move <laughs> it. I can move it. Beep. Okay. So now that's here. Now, if we want to, um, there, there are no internals on this ship. I don't have any models that you probably have that have complex internals, but um, we have this tool, which is this, uh, see this sphere I'm holding? Yeah. So grab that and then walk over to and hold it into the ship. Just like press it into the ship. Oh, cool. Right? And then uh, I can change the shape of that to be a square. So now it's square. Uh, if we want, we can change it so that it is 
it slices like via the whole bounding box of the model. Okay, so now you see it over there, the plane. Yeah. Of the thing. Let's um, yep. do it up top. It's just going to cycle through all the. Yeah, so let's do the top. So now I can expand it. And when I expand it, you see the ship disappearing in front of you. What are we trying to do? We're trying to help our customers make better decisions faster. Better decisions faster. Not the perfect decision every time, because that's impossible, because we're all terribly flawed human beings, but better decisions faster, <laughs> right? <laughs> With the right stakeholders and, um, uh -huh. and, and, and be connected to the data and be connected to each other. And uh, that has not ever been tried before, but it, it just seems to make a lot of sense that that system would work really, really well. A system like this, where it's you and me and then the three other people that are involved in the decision making wherever yeah. they happen to be in the world and and like you can see like the mr tyner over there they don't all have to be in vr like they can if they don't have vr available they can join just from their pc uh and they're not you know beholden to have a headset and all the all that stuff okay that's good to yeah. know yeah um so so it's uh yeah Super cool, super powerful, and that um, concludes, I think, this demo. And let's do a thumbs up. <laughs> I can't remember how to do it. Uh, press to the right, I think. Yes. Oh, almost. There we are. Okay, I'll send you that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I hope to uh, continue working with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Reach out anytime. I, this is like, I live for this stuff. So 